What's going on YouTube? I'm here in the Arima and uh, today we're not in the water but I want to do um, I want to do a video because I'm going to be replacing my uh, my solenoid on my Evinrude 150 so I wanted to show you guys how, how I'm going to go ahead and replace that but um, I'll show you what, exactly what happened I was actually in the water I had driven down to uh, Monterey we're going to go out for salmon and I go and I try to crank and absolutely nothing happens so nothing happens I'm starting to wonder what's going on why is it not working uh, luckily I have my buddy there with me and he knew a little bit more about you know the the motor and so we started looking at it we thought it was a starter first we knew it wasn't the battery just because I have a, a gauge right here that shows me my volts my volts were I think 12.3, 12.35, so I knew I was full, fully charged. I knew I had charged the battery the day before, so I knew battery wasn't an issue. Um, but um, for some reason it wouldn't, it just wouldn't crank. Uh, so we we're thinking it was the alternator, and then my buddy figured out it was a solenoid. So as you crank, what happens is solenoid it actually gives a signal, sends it off and the starter will actually crank your motor and go but if there's some sort of bad connection which is what i'm thinking what it was some sort of bad connection on the solenoid and it doesn't make contact it never sends a signal and it just your your, uh, your boat won't crank so i'm going to show you a little bit of a trick of what you can do that uh my buddy showed me so thanks to him we were able to get this motor started <clears throat> and i'll show you a little trick just in case this happens and you know everything is fine it might be the solenoid you can try this out and it'll get your boat started you can go fishing for the day and then uh, you can go ahead and fix it it's a part that really all it does it's it's once you hit the the switch it'll send a signal and it'll hit, make your starter go some motors actually even have a manual crank which you can bypass it that way and you can just crank it and it'll go um, this one didn't have one so uh, luckily we were able to do it this way but all you need is a, is a wire I had one fortunately I usually carry a, a little tackle box with full of all the tools that I need so it's I got extra fuses I got wires I got uh, anything I need I got my crescent wrenches just anything you can use that sometimes you you have an issue with your motor you got to make sure you have something so you can try to get it started so luckily I did have a wire. I'll show you exactly what the, the wire was, but that's pretty much it. This is what you'll need so you can bypass um, that solenoid and you get that, uh, that thing started. So yeah, I'll show you right now exactly how we did it. What we're gonna do is just gonna make sure that the key switch is on. Like if we were gonna ignite right now, the power is on, but as you see, nothing happens as we click. So we'll just leave it in the on position. And what we're gonna do is go down here. I'm gonna turn on the water just to make sure that nothing happens to the motor. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. Get water running so it doesn't overheat. And this is what you do guys, so this right here is your solenoid and what happens is there's something here that's going on that's not giving the not giving it the connection so it can go to the starter on the other side and ignite so as you see I, as I flip the key nothing will happen so basically what we have to do is get these connectors and just hook them to one side the positive and the negative and that'll get the connection going um, you can try to hold it, but as the current is running through, it gets really hot. So I'm just going to grab a set of pliers. And this is basically what we did. We just connect both of these. And that's it, guys. You'll see that it just needed that connection, that spark there and it started right up. So that's basically all you need guys. Little connection, hook them together and you'll get going. And that's what gets you up 
up in a bind, so we know the engine started. So we know that our starter is good, everything is good. I'll go ahead and turn it off. I'll go ahead and turn it off. Now that it's off, we know that everything's running good, so we know that it's our solenoid. So I'll show you how to replace that. We got a brand new one here. We're gonna go ahead and replace that guy. So we'll get this one out of there and then we'll put that new one in there. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. We don't need that water no more. All right, so now that we have everything, the first thing we're gonna do is make sure we cut off all our power. So we'll put that in the kill switch. We'll put it off. We know there's no more power running. Basically what we do, sometimes what I like to do is take a picture. That way we know everything exactly how it was snap a quick photo and uh, just in case we forget or there's a lot more switches we can always uh, remember that look back to our picture and take a look so that's it and what I found out is that this is a number 13 this is a number 10 and that's basically it we got a switch here a plug-in and uh, that's all we need so we'll go ahead and take these off Like I said, this guy is just a quick little plug-in. Looks a little different. Hopefully, it'll end up working. Yeah, they fit right in, so it works. Has that same plug-in set up there. Just a little bit different, but not too bad. We'll lay that one exactly right there, and then just kind of reverse it, right? We'll put these two in there. Kind of start them with the hand. We pretty much lock them tight. Get them here. Just get them going. And I lock them in little by little. Oh, looks good. Tighten this one up a little bit more. That looks pretty good. Now we have our connection down here. Make sure we pop this one in. That's it. And then just to lock that guy in there. Take this one off. One, two, three. Put in this guy that was there before. It's a little crushed, but that'll be fine. We put our main guy in there. And then our last two. Just make sure we tighten it up. This one looks like it might be a. No. Might be. Looks like a 11 or 12. Let me get that. Yep. <clears throat> just 
different, so. Basically go in there, crush it back to pancake style. That's it, that one's ready. And take this one, get a positive cable. That lock nut in there. And final one. Get one right. Last ratchet. Doesn't need to be too tight. Just enough. Make sure you got the connection. That looks pretty good. Lock it back in. And that should be pretty much it, guys. I don't think you can replace these. I've never looked inside of one, but I think the better thing is just to buy a new one. I mean, it was it was only $30 for a new part. I got it in like two days from, they got them on eBay, Amazon, everywhere. So just check your um, <clears throat> engine model and uh, and you'll be able to find exactly which one it is. But that should be it. We got our all our cables back in. We got our switch plugged back in. And everything looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Cross our fingers and hope it works. So I'll turn the water back on. On nice and tight. Gonna go ahead and just put my power back on there. Make sure the water was on, and that should start. Cross our fingers. There it is, guys. Beautiful sound, she's working. pretty much it we did it guys so remember this guy can save you in a pinch you just connect those two guys you connect them if you have pliers have it if not you know hold it just remember it's gonna get hot but once you make that connection between those two posts positive and negative I should second the signal to the starter and pop it right up if it nothing happens and it keeps going then you know then you're probably gonna have to switch your starter and uh, yeah you're gonna have to you won't be able to get that started unless you have a hand crank you can start it that way but um that's it this will be a pretty quick one thank you guys for watching thank you guys for um being here with me today so i hope you guys like this one and uh i'll see you on the next one